We recently disembarked a seven-night cruise on board the Vista, Oceania's newest ship, where we stayed in a concierge-level veranda stateroom. Concierge classrooms are essentially identical to the standard veranda staterooms on board the Vista. They simply offer more prime locations and a host of amenities and privileges. Nevertheless, the basic layout and design are the same, making this tour of our concierge-level veranda stateroom applicable to the standard veranda staterooms as well. Meaning the large majority of the cabins on board the Oceania Vista look exactly like this one. We'll start with a close look around the cabin, then we'll go over the extras that are included with the concierge level, and we'll let you know if we think they make the added expense worth it. So please come along and join us here on Calling All Ports with Andrew and Diana. A few fast facts. Vista is the first of Oceana's new Allura class of ships. It set sail in May 2023, and it carries 1,200 passengers and 800 crew, which gives the Vista a crew to passenger ratio of about 1 to 1.5. As we'll talk about more soon, that stat was clearly evident on our cruise through the remarkable service we received from our stateroom attendants. The Vista is what Oceana are calling an all veranda ship, meaning there are no interior cabins. So all cabins and suites have a balcony, even the solo cabins, though there are some cabins with only a French veranda, meaning it's only a floor to ceiling glass door with a railing, but no exterior space that you step out onto, like on river cruise ships. There are 11 public decks on the Vista, which are numbered decks five through 16, Uh, with all of the 612 passenger cabins found on decks 7 through 12. Concierge level veranda staterooms are all on those decks. Those standard uh, veranda and solo veranda staterooms are only down on decks 7 and 8, meaning if you want a room on an upper deck above uh, above deck 8, so decks 9 or above, then you're going to have to get into a concierge level stateroom uh, or one of the higher level suites. We stayed on deck 10 in stateroom number 10061, which was located on the starboard side, almost squarely midship. We were only two decks below the pool deck and the Terrace Cafe buffet, three decks below Barista's coffee bar, yet surrounded on all sides by other passenger cabins. It was a really nice location. Oceania claims that the Vista offers the most spacious standard staterooms at sea, beginning at more than 290 square feet. And indeed, as you first enter our cabin, you'll see it's a nice size with a bright, airy feel. It offers a typical cruise cabin configuration with the bathroom and closet near the entry door, the bed in the middle positioned sideways, and a desk vanity unit and seating area in front of the balcony door. Let's start in the bathroom. So for us personally, this is one of our favorite cruise ship bathrooms. It's not the largest or the most luxurious we've ever had, yet it suited our needs perfectly. It's remarkably spacious when you first step in. And the herringbone title is striking. It has an extra large vanity, and while there's only one sink, at least there's plenty of countertop space for a couple people to share. This frameless backlit anti-fog mirror is an excellent feature, plus it just looks really stunning. You get Bulgari bath amenities. The toilet is positioned really well. Uh, As a taller guy, I'm often squeezed between a wall and a counter or my knees are jammed against a cabinet. There's none of that happening here. 
And there's a ton of storage here in the bathroom, uh, in the vanity, underneath it, and to the side. And this entire corner cabinet with multiple shelves and drawers. There are plentiful towels dispersed across various towel rods and hooks. And then there's the shower. Oh, the shower. Uh, it's got a sliding glass door, uh, both an oversized rain shower head and a wand showered head multiple shelves for toiletries, and a clothesline. And more than anything, it's just really nice and big. Again, I'm a tall guy and in hotels and cruise cabins, I'm usually bumping into the walls and the door of the shower, but that was never a problem here on the Vista. Enthusiastic two thumbs up for this bathroom. Exiting the bathroom, there's a full-length mirror on the exterior wall, and the room control panel is here by the entry door. Like a lot of these units on newer ships, you can control more than just the thermostat from here. For instance, you can select the Do Not Disturb makeup room options. And our panel actually malfunctioned one night, causing the AC to fail. Apparently, there was an internal set point temperature that was wrong, and that wasn't our best night of sleep. However, the room attendant got the maintenance crew to fix it immediately the next day, and within a few hours, we were good. We didn't have any problems with it again. Then you've got the cupboard style closet. There's a decent amount of hangers and space for clothes here. And you've got a pair of cotton robes, slippers, a golf umbrella. However, the top shelf of the closet is taken up by the life jackets and other room amenities like pool towels and lap blankets for the balcony. And as you'll see when we get to the rest of the cabin, there isn't much else in the way of cabinets or drawers for clothing. The Achilles heel of these veranda staterooms is their lack of storage. It's passable for a shorter cruise, we made it work. However, a longer cruise would really require a bit more storage space. At the very least, a few cubby style open shelves here in the closet would go a really long way. Next to the closet, there's this corner cabinet unit with an open shelf for the dry bar. Uh, so it's a little countertop area for the ice bucket, drinking glasses, and water bottles. Oceana gives you still drinking water in these one liter glass bottles that they constantly refill. Plus, every room gets two of these metal reusable water bottles, which you can refill at stations all over the ship, and which you get to take home for free at the end of your cruise. Above the dry bar, there's a small cabinet with the safe and a couple open shelves. Uh, it's a good-sized safe that can fit a large laptop. Though for us, this was really the only spot that worked to store bulkier items like our photo and video gear. The lower section of this cabinet is actually the mini fridge. It comes stocked with soft drinks, which are replenished daily, and you can request any special beverages that you might prefer. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please hit that notification bell and subscribe to Calling All Ports. We've got loads of new videos about premium, luxury, and ultra luxury cruise travel lined up for the weeks and months ahead including a lot more content from the Oceana Vista and also the Oceana Serena. So don't miss any of those videos. Click subscribe. The bed is Oceania's exclusive Ultra Tranquility mattress with 1000 thread count linens. It's a queen size mattress and definitely it's a very, very comfortable bed. 
There's an upholstered wall-mounted headboard and good lighting around the bed, a pair of wall sconces and pop-out reading lights. And each side of the bed has a nightstand with three small drawers and a pull-out shelf. Plus, each side gets a full set of light switches along with one US power socket, one standard USB-A plug, and one USB-C plug. There's a decent amount of storage space for luggage underneath the bed, though a word of warning that anything bigger than a medium hard shell suitcase probably won't fit. So leave those large or extra large suitcases at home. At the foot of the bed, there's a large wall-mounted flat screen TV, and it's a good size screen. And the interactive TV has a decent selection of live TV channels and on-demand movies. One feature that we believe is unique to Vista compared to the rest of the Oceania fleet is that you can access the daily restaurant menus from the stateroom TV. It was nice to be able to check what the MDRO dinner specials were directly from the TV. The lighting around the entire room is ample. In addition to these sconces and, and the overhead LED ceiling lights, there are recessed lighting strips around the wall panels that give a nice flash of ambient lighting and, and that adds a simple elegance and stylish twist to the cabin's otherwise subdued light gray color motif. Moving over to the small living room area, you've got a fairly comfy love seat with a pair of big pillows, and there's a sturdy marble topped table. The sort of desk vanity unit also has a marble top. The table surface here is rather small, maybe only 14 inches deep. There's a makeup mirror in the corner and a large lighted mirror on the wall. Unfortunately, the top couple of drawers here are taken up with the hair dryer and stationery and other room amenities. That leaves only the lower pair of drawers open for clothing storage. There's the phone and, and then your main strip of power outlets. Two US power sockets, one European socket, and a pair of USB-A and USB-C plugs. The balcony is a decent size with a small yet sturdy side table and a pair of rather nice cushioned patio chairs. Stylish, as well as comfortable. And a couple other things to mention here about the stateroom before we discuss the concierge level perks. First, all staterooms on Oceania Vista get twice daily housekeeping service. One in the morning, starting at 8 a.m., I believe, and again in the evening between 6 and 9 p.m. And that's when they'll do the nightly turndown service. And you get yummy Belgian chocolates and the next day's printed activity schedule. And we need to give a really big shout out to our room attendant, Oliveira, and her assistant, Ray. They were simply amazing. Everything was perfectly clean. They were quick to help us whenever there was a problem, like with the faulty control panel. And they were just so friendly and helpful. To the earlier point about Vista having a 1 to 1.5 crew to passenger ratio, it seemed like we always saw Oliveira and Ray. Every time we were going from our cabin, we'd bump into them and get a warm hello and ask if we needed anything. Amazing service. Second, and this is a slight negative, the cabins on Vista can be slightly noisy. This doesn't seem to be isolated to our deck or the concierge level cabin class. It seems to be a ship-wide soundproofing issue. Even Gary Bembridge of Tips for Travelers has talked about this noise problem a lot already. 
We were actually on the same cruise together. We talked with Gary quite a bit about the noise. And we know that the issue really bothered Gary personally, and he was actually one cabin class above us in the penthouse suite. He could hear neighboring guest voices in his room, like full-on conversations carrying through the walls. And we heard these in our cabin too, though only a handful of times. And I think it comes down to that one wall of our cabin happened to be along a fire break. So that may have given our cabin a bit more insulation. Regardless, Poor soundproofing is a blemish for this luxury ship. Again, most of what you've seen here so far is going to be identical for a standard veranda stateroom. So what else do you get with the concierge level upgrade? A few of those amenities are right here in the room. For instance, you get a complimentary welcome bottle of champagne and a waterproof tote bag, which is actually quite nice. You also get cashmere blankets for the balcony, uh, though it was over 80 degrees outside for our entire Caribbean cruise. Then there are laundry services. You get three free bags of laundry, although it doesn't include pressing. You're only given four vouchers for free garment pressing. The full service laundry also takes up to three days, which isn't super useful if you're on a short seven night cruise like we were. You need to get your laundry in within just the first couple of days in order to even get it back in time and and wear it again. There are also some privileges for concierge level staterooms that aren't here in the cabin itself. The big ones are that you get card access to the private concierge lounge and the Aquamar spa terrace. The concierge lounge is up on deck 11 and it features a dedicated concierge, a beverage and snack station, dining menus and other ship brochures and info, and printouts of multiple daily newspapers, including the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. We stopped by the lounge a few times. It was nice to sit and read the papers, but it was dead quiet and we didn't get the sense that anyone was making frequent use of it. The Aquamar Spa Terrace is up on deck 15. It's an open air deck at the front of the ship with loungers, plunge pools, whirlpool spas. And we were like really excited about using it before we got on the ship, though in the end we only visit it briefly a couple of times. A couple other privileges. You're supposed to get expanded lunch and dinner room service menus and priority specialty restaurant reservations. Though if either of those things are true, we never really noticed them. Uh, It wasn't easy to get specialty dining reservations online beforehand uh, unless you were willing to dine late, which luckily we were. And it, I guess it just so happens that we never ordered room service for either lunch or dinner. So, is paying up for a concierge-level veranda stateroom worth it? Well, yes and no. Honestly, we loved our location up on Deck 10 midship, and the only way that you can get on Decks 9, 10, 11, or 12 is to take a concierge stateroom or suite. So we would likely book our concierge-level veranda room again for the location alone. Beyond that, though, the amenities and privileges don't really add up, for us anyway. On a 14-day or longer itinerary, absolutely the extras probably would be worth it. However, on a short 7-day cruise, we personally didn't find time to properly make use of the Aquamar Spa Terrace or Concierge Lounge or even the complimentary laundry service. Those extras are certainly nice, but did we get $60 per day value out of them? Probably not because that's roughly the price difference between a veranda and a concierge level veranda, $30 per person per day. Still, 
It is a great cabin, and the Vista is a wonderful ship. If you want to hear more of our overall thoughts on the Oceana Vista, please check out this video we filmed shortly after boarding. It captures our embarkation process and our first impressions of the ship. While you're at it, please give this video a like and share a comment. We always love to hear your thoughts and we respond to every comment. And now is as good a time as any to subscribe to Calling All Ports. Until next time, be seeing you.